anō hari atu anō aku mihi whakawhetai, aku whakamanua, kia koutou katoa. Ko tahuri mai ki te pai o mata. Ko mihi ngā rangi a hau e kawe ana i te Māori o tō tātou wānanga i te rā nei. Welcome to the very first episode of Mata with me, Mihi Ngārangi Forbes, supported, of course, by the Public Interest Journalism Fund and Te Māngai Pāho. Well, today we'll be discussing the issues making headlines and headwinds. In Hekama, there have been a lot of them. Later in the show, I'll be joined by Tau Henari and Dr Lara Greaves. Engari mātua rā, kia tahuri ake tātou ki te tai rāwhiti. It's been a week since Cyclone Gabriel hit, and whānau across Aotearoa are still doing it tough. The Hawke's Bay and te tai rāwhiti have been ground zero, with thousands across the region displaced, with limited access to power, water and roading. Nō reira, kia hono atu tātou, kia Kiri Tapu Allen, the MP for the East Coast, joins us now via Zoom from te tai rāwhiti. Tēnā koe, uh, e te minata. can you please give us your observations over the last few days? Kia mihi, yeah, look, we're looking at incredibly high levels of devastation throughout the rohe uh, in terms of both infrastructure, homes, our businesses, uh, lives uh, have been significantly disrupted in the wake of Gabriel here in Te Tairawhiti and with our relations down the road down the Ngāti Kahunu uh, throughout the Hawke's Bay uh, she's going to be a multi-billion dollar recovery that we're looking ahead of us, and I don't think we're under any illusion about that. Over the past couple of days, the real priorities have just been ensuring that our whānau get the basics, things like shelter, kai, access to power, water, and yesterday we had a pretty big breakthrough here in Te Tairawhiti where we've got a lot more of our comms uh, have been up and running so people uh, can at least get news out to their whānau and it also means here in Te Tairawhiti today, uh, businesses are starting to come online. But there's still um, some pretty big major issues we're dealing with. Our, our water supply is incredibly short. So we're on a conservation uh, note. You shouldn't be using water unless you really need to here in, in the in region. And also uh, our roading infrastructure has been pretty devastated. And that's both state highways as well as uh, local infrastructure. So cope up at the moment, support our whānau uh, as we transition through to the recovery phases. In regards of Hapore Māori, those little Māori settlements, are there any that are still of a major concern to you? Well, there are some uh, communities like down there in Waipiro, up there in Tapuia. Uh, you know, they are they are physically isolated. So just last night into Tapuia, we had great news finally that they had a generator that was able to be dropped down to the hospital to be able to provide power. But they've been uh, that they are they are geographically isolated. Waipiro, I heard, heard here the spirits are high, but you know making sure that we are getting things like kai and just the basic necessities of life is a really good uh, system that's up and running. But it took a few days because we had uh, literally had no comms, no power, no, just the basics that you need to operate. Right. Down over there in Tikaraka, uh, their whānau has been decimated. It's been really impacted. 500 people were evacuated up into two little hills. Um, I caught up with them that on day two. Uh, that was in it was just absolutely devastating. You're seeing meeting whānau that have lost their homes two times, first in Bola, now in Gabriel, losing all of their possessions. Mama coming home to nothing for their babies. They've got no homes. They've got no clothes. So we've started to see um, there is a lot of support wrapping around those communities. Uh, but look, it's not going to be a, a day's, week's task. This is a month's, year's task that we've got collectively yes. uh, as, a, as a country ahead of us. And uh, the Finance Minister has released the Recovery Fund, uh, mayoral funds, of course, civil defence payments, primary sector uh, response, support for the NGOs. There's 250 to rebuild build roads and 50 million to businesses and a little bit more. Where in this package do you see Hapore Māori and Fano Māori benefiting? Oh across every aspect, to be honest. Look, our hapuri Māori are around those CDM tables, so directing where welfare and, and other needs need to go. Uh, they are at the forefront of the infrastructure rebuild, like here one of the priorities in Te Tairawhiti is State Highway 35. That said, um, look, I, I, so th those are within the, the usual groupings of the packages, and these are just immediate release packages. 
but it's clear that there does need to be tailored and bespoke um, support for uh, Hapori Māori, the marae that have been running around the clock to uh, clothe and house and, and feed people. Yeah, I was going to uh, ask also, about um, the marae because Te Pāti Māori has a they want a dedicated marae fund. I mean, we've seen some of the devastation of those marae, the tukutuku panels and, you know, just terrible. Would you support something like that? Is there something like that in this package that can be uh, specifically for marae? Oh, look, I, I think it goes a lot further than that, if I can be so frank, Mihi. I think it's a lovely idea, but actually our, our whānau needs are a lot broader than that. Marae are critical. We've got, I've got a couple of red stickered here in Te Pai Rāwhiti. Uh, I don't know if a couple of million dollars is going to get them back up and running, and that's not the only needs within those hapori. So well, well we let's talk be, about that because, yeah, uh, I mean, I think mm. people agree with you. So if you're not like an orchard farmer or, you know, a farmer some, somewhere, you're just maybe just a queer that's living on Upapakainga on with no insurance because it's expensive and you're living on the yeah. pension. Perhaps the forestry state slash has come through and decimated your property. Who who supports her? Like where in this fund is there money for her? Yeah. Oh well, the, yeah, multiple places, eh? So first thing. So you first, will be supporting uh, people with no insurance. Queer, if she was that queer, uh, first things first, she would have had uh, support immediately provided through uh, her iwi providers or through the marae. We're directly funding those through uh, the funds that have been made available. That would have been the first point. Second point will be all of those agencies now will be trying to find her a home to live in. Uh, and they'll be working either. It depends, really. It's really different responses in different communities. It depends what's on the ground. We are working closely with those communities. What works in Tolaga isn't going to work in Rotoria, and that's very but, clear to us. Yeah, so but, you've got to know, and agencies, government agencies, need to know how to work with those communities. Yes, but and will some there be, but, but, be, but, 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 will there be support no, no, for people no, no, who have no insurance? out and get things wrong so and i know you like a good headline but this is the reality of what we're dealing with here the government agencies have to swing in behind those particular hapori and understand the needs of them so we've got right now i've got government agencies out at tikaraka up at all up the coast we've got them here in town but like i said you can't just do a big blanket um uh, uh, you know one-stop shop what we're doing right here and this is part of the announcement that grant and uh, minister yep. of finance and prime minister made yesterday Every area will have a lead minister uh, within their region. Uh, so, yes, of course, our businesses, they've, they've got some immediate uh, issues to tend to. Yes, of course, our Hapori Māori have some issues that they need to attend to. We're going to funnel those through a singular minister in each of the rohe to okay. make sure that the support is prioritised to each of those hapori. Kapai, let's just talk about um, one of the issues that you've actually been going on for, for a long time, and that's the slash in the East Coast. One of the farmers described it as bulldo logs the size of bulldozers going through her property. Why do forestry companies get away with polluting our fenua and destroying our communities? You know, if you go talk to some of the um, those that live through uh, Cyclone Boulder, when they were kids, I'm talking about all the whānau from up the, the coast at the moment, you know, they were kids replanting that whenua after bowler in pine trees because it was seen as something that would help those coastal communities both economically and environmentally. No, we, I mean, Minister, we understand, we understand that. We understand that the, the, well, no, the jobs is, that they've created yeah, and things like that. But are the, respect, are, are, you, like, are, are the forestry... Of place. So for the past 30 years... Are you years, going to look into some kind of an inquiry into forestry in companies? Where they have had to deal with those forestry practices and they haven't been up to scratch. And we've seen those prosecutions come through post the 2018... Yeah, but Jen, um, can, can I give you an example the, of what they were? So the 2018 ones, uh, one of the forestry companies paid $130,000 in emotional harm it's just not good enough well look I, I i can feel that you know we can have a proper conversation and want to have a conversation you've got to realize my entire coast is dependent on forestry as they is paying their their um their pay packets every week right so we can't just say stop forestry tomorrow we've got to transition out now that's what the iwi here are working on. That's what the landowners are here are working on, and that's what the hapuri are working but, on. But the, but the when community, the, slash, the community you live is in asking for one thing. The community is asking them down, to pick up their rubbish once so they've chopped the nothing. trees down. Isn't it just about cleaning it up? Clean up is one thing, uh, but it's actually about the ongoing. These are those slash piles that you see coming down. Those are pre twenty eighteen. 
Okay. So yeah, you can get up there. The, the the safety issues that we've got, it's just not as simple as everybody seems to be making it out to are be. Are you open to, you know, are, you open, ask, are you open to an fires? independent Can we dig them under holes? Can we do all these types of things? Everybody's got a good idea. But okay. actually, there's a big role that the that the forestry sector, they've got a massive role and they know that they're just losing quickly, their Just quickly, Minister, are you open to an independent inquiry, inquiry into the forestry industry? Yes we've, already no? supported, we've already supported an independent inquiry and the terms are being worked up right now. Ka pai, tēnā koe. A kia haumaru te noho. Hoki mai ki te taumata kōrero nei, uh, well, we thought uh, we'd bring in the big guns for our first panel, so better, who, who better than two northerners? <laughs> Motato's uh, greatest troubleshooter slash troublemaker, the Honourable Tau <laughs> Henare and Ngāpui Ngāti Kuri, political scientist Dr Lara Grease. Tēnā kōrua. Kia ora. Kia ora. Yeah. What, what's your reaction to the Minister's kōrero then? Oh, look, um, it, it, it's the most devastating civil defence uh, uh, issue that we've seen and and I was pa in 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 in, bo in, in uh, Bola mm. in Te Araroa. Um, had a brother-in-law down there and a sister-in-law who got caught up in um, um, up, up the north in Bola. Um, and for years and years and years we used to travel from here to Te Araroa. And it, it just, it was like it never, ever got any better on, on 35 mm. from Auckland to, to Tararua. And what worries me is, is that we're just going to do the same old thing. Yeah. You know, we've had the, we had the mm. issues. We know what the issues are. You know, you talk about slash. We know what the issues are. Are we going to do the same thing because we're asking the same questions and getting the same answers and we're just going to um, return to a place where we're going to make the same mistakes and more people in 30 years' time are going to be around a table like this talking to somebody else. What needs to happen, Lara? Uh, well, I think that people talking instantly about the disaster, yeah, we do need to make sure that people are safe straight, yes. straight off the bat, but then we also, it's quite clear, need things like that inquiry into Slash. We need to also start thinking about infrastructure under climate change. Like, OK, we build it back, it costs a certain amount, the social licence for that in the immediate future, but in the longer term, like most voters now understand that climate change is, got, is an issue and is going to further be an issue in the future. Mm. So I think it's time to actually have those, or well, not quite now, but quite soon have yeah, those yeah. conversations about the future. Yeah. Back, in, back in 1938, there was a, 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 a massive flood, very, very similar uh, along the Esk Valley. Um, mm. And and when, when you, we didn't talk about um, climate change. No. What we what we did was we we allowed people to build and to have their businesses, apple orchards and so on and so forth, and farms mm. on the same floodplain. So that's a conversation that needs, happen, ha yeah. needs to happen. Yeah, and it's not going to feed people tomorrow. So no, that's yeah. right. So looking at the recovery package, I mean, the opposition's been critical. They've said that it's not specific enough. I asked the minister, you know, what happens to the kui up the coast? Will there be any support mm. for people with no insurance? She didn't really answer that. What's your thoughts? On Nobody that? answers the question. I mean, the problem with um, when you get a big disaster yeah. like this, and, and it's been seen in, in Christchurch as well, is that the bureaucracy gets in the way. You know, there's a... a, a, a I was going to swear, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, there's a, there's a, a, a screed of papers that you have to fill out. Yeah. You know, and and about a week after a disaster, people people um, are starting to get real, real angry, mm -hmm. and then and, and I can see it now coming. Um, it, yeah, you, you, you've, you, obviously you've gonna this this thing like Kitty Tapu says is gonna cost billions, mm. and I mean billions. Yes. Well, that's saying tens of billions. Yeah, I know. Um, I, I think that by the end, by the time we get through it all and pay for everything, it'll be upwards of 20, 15 billion, 20 billion. Um, and you're talking about roads. You're talking mm. about everything that you can fit under the headline infrastructure. I guess the question I was trying to ask the Minister was for those communities where we know we have kaumatsu kuia who don't often have insurance, Marae doesn't have insurance. Um, is there anything specific in that budget that you can see would, would accommodate and would support those 
com communities? Well, there isn't. And I think one of the things there is that communities post-COVID, they kind of saw what was possible under COVID. So that paperwork seemed to decrease a lot when they wanted something out of Māori communities mm. that was going out and vaccinating yeah. everyone, right? Yeah. So that's what communities now go with that package. Like, OK, so under COVID, you could do this, that and the other thing. But now there's all this paperwork in place yeah. that are like being kind of left to the side. And like we know this as well through disasters. We know that certain communities don't, they get overlooked. They don't, people don't look after their needs. And I think that this is probably what will happen and what actually people in the climate change space have been saying for decades is that we need that just transition. We need to be making sure that we're looking out for different communities, including Māori communities in that, right? Yeah. Like that's what they've been saying for decades. Uh, Kiri Tapu Allen also said, you know, she was very, uh, she was forceful, really, when in, in the response to the slash that the forestry industry has been looking after those communities for decades now. Do you think that's an indication that they're not going to be tough on forestry? Yep, basically. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, look, look. Everybody knows. Everybody, apart from the 120 odd people that are domiciled in Parliament buildings, knows that it's the forestry industry's fault. It's mm. their, it's their work. You know what slash is? Slash is rubbish mm. that the that the industry left behind because they they don't see an economic value in it. Well, I tell you what, how about we have mobile um, uh, mills that that take all of that slash and one chop it up and give it away for free for people with for firewood. Mm. Two, why don't you mulch it? I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just picking You're coming ideas. Up with ideas. I'm yeah. just picking out ideas, and I'm sure that there's better people than me. But, but at the end of the day, it's their rubbish. Mm. There's been decades we've had people come up with ideas mm. like producer responsibility mm. and trying to pass legislation like that. Mm. Do you think this time we might get some somewhere with it? Oh, see, I think that it's that thing that it comes back to, and it is actually what people like Bryce Edwards and Simon Chappell and all those people in the, the governance group at, at, at Victoria have been saying for a while, is the lobbying. Like, we don't have this really clear line and obvious, like, what's happening with lobbying and all of those interest groups in Parliament and what's happening with those relationships. Mm. We don't have clarity on that, and that's probably something that needs to fall into place in the next little while in order to get something like forestry, a proper investigation into that. Well, what, it mean, what it needs is a minister who get off their, their asses and say, right, you're rubbish, you clean it up. If you don't, stop doing it because yep. we won't let you go. And, and, and the, the emotional blackmail, and, and Kitty Tapu sort of went down that it line. went down the working uh, class bread and butter line. Yeah, yes. exactly. Well, I'm afraid um, the, the whole lot of things are going to have to change. Yeah. Mm. And we just got to have to get used to it. I like the idea. I love the idea. Um, what you said was, was um, what, about a, what about a marae fund? Mm. Yeah. Now, well, it was, it was Te Pāti Māori, to be fair. Yeah. They want a marae relief fund. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, well, that's what I'm... a couple I'm... of million dollars in it just to repair the tukutuku and those kinds of things. Yeah, but, but, but let's go bigger. Let, let, let's go bigger and, and actually have a dedicated marae development fund. I know that they have it in lottery, mm -hmm. um, but let's, have, let's, have, let's broaden our, our thinking on it. Mm. Because like you say, I mean, most marae that I know of don't have insurance. Yeah. Mm. They just That's don't. Right. Mm. They, none of them have sprinklers, for goodness yes. sake. Mm. And, and we've heard enough people, you know, who are on pension say that they don't have enough, that their pension doesn't go far enough to have insurance. Let's move away from um, Cyclone Gabriel for a little while. Well, not quite away, but let's just talk about, it's less than a month since Christopher, mm. uh, Chris Hipkins has been the Prime Minister. How do you rate his performance so far? I love him. Really? Yeah, honestly. I mean, I thought I liked uh, Jacinda, um, but 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 I I think um, I I think the reason why I like Chippy is is that um, not not only that I I know him and I've, I've worked a bit with him, but he's uh, he he's sort of the old school Labour hands on style leader. You know, he knows what he's doing. I mean, I I, I I've had a few shots at him, um, but that goes with the territory. Um, You've had a shot at everyone, so it yeah, doesn't really like count. Like it goes with my territory. <laughs> what about your thoughts on, in terms of his performance as Prime Minister? Yeah, well, he's had quite the month, hasn't he? <laughs> like different things <laughs> and different events to get over and then just being sort of thrown into it, although yeah. we did get an indication that he kind of knew that maybe that would be his job. Um, yeah, what a month for him. He's been relatively 
like he's he's kind of dodged a few gaffes. Like he hasn't really had any kind of situation you can point to. He couldn't name in his first one of his first press conferences all the articles of the treaty. Like there's just little things yeah, like that. You can though. But exactly. Yeah. So it's one of those things where there's just been the little things so yeah. far. It's not been like there's not been a situation where you can point to where he's like dropped the ball or yeah. anything at this stage. So I mean, it's that thing of like Jacinda Ardern to some extent rewrote the political science rule book on how you act in a crisis or in a disaster, but that means the bar's up here, and so like he can't really like he's just doing a good job, but like not mm. and not a bad job. He's just not rewriting any rule book. I don't it's love been, him. It's been a little while yeah, since he did, did the reshuffle. Sort of, you know. He did a reshuffle and he did he turned the K of the waka into a different kind of direction. Was it good for them? Is it going to be good for? Well, it, yeah, they got a little bounce back in the numbers. Oh, they got, and, and, and you normally would anyway in a, in a bit of a reshuffle, a new prime minister, mm. lo everything looks fresh, so people out there are quite comfortable. They they want to know what this guy's on mm. about. Um, oh, oh, there, there's a few winners and a few losers. Yeah, you were talking about some of the ministerial changes earlier on. Yeah, I mean, why why would you take uh, the 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 defence portfolio off my cousin? <laughs> what did he do? What did he do I don't know. to deserve that sort of treatment? But it's all right. Willie got a promotion. Willow got a promotion. So, I mean, you know, these sort of things, uh, they, they, they come and they go, and politics is an evil, evil business. Mm. But, but, but um, hey, they, they do it. So there, there have been a few, you know, some of those reshuffles, and yeah. there had been a bit of criticism from Māori to say that, you know, Māori had mm. been demoted, if you like. Um, do you think it's going to count when it comes to the elections? Will Māori remember? Oh, so the elections, that's thats a hard one to predict, firstly, <laughs> but ultimately to Party Māori are there now. Well, yeah. they were there before, but now they're back. Yes. They're there now, In and numbers. they can do things like, say, let's put this money into rebuilding Marae because they're a minor party and they're ultimately never going to be the ones actually, as finance minister, they're never mm. actually going to be in that position. So they've actually got quite a lot of sort of, there's contestation in the Māori electorates. There's like, you know, proper opposition again. There was in the 90s, but there's, it's back. They're getting and a so, bit of platform. Yeah, so voice. they've got that there. So for for the um, Māori MPs within Labour, the Māori caucus, they do actually have that contestation, that opposition there now. And it's like, it's. I think the Māori electorates are going to be one to watch. And like that, that's going to be quite an important part, especially the way that our system works under MMP. It's like, yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's like the black caps um, at the moment. They're playing really, really crap and they need a good clean out. And I think some somewhere along the line, the Labour Party are going to have to have a look at that too. You know, um, Calvin up north. Penny here, Nanaya. Hmm. She'd, be, she'd been there 26 years. 26 That's years. That's amazing. So t we've talked about the government, the Māori Party. Let's talk about the opposition. Has it been difficult for them <laughs> to, get, to, get a, to get a voice? Oh, not, no, nah, not really. I think, I think uh, uh, Luxon is actually doing reasonably well in terms of getting out what he wants to say. That's his job. His first job was to shore up that, that bedrock rip, uh, support from, from National, and he did. And now he's got to go and find some new fellas to vote for him, and and uh, there's a big there's a big fight on the on the right. You've got Act, and you've got Uncle. You know, Winston, <laughs> Winston is hovering. Mm. He's four point five percent or around that. And I tell you what, I wouldn't put it past them to get the 5%. I don't think he will. Do you think, though, in this climate, you know, we're talking about climate change now yeah. because we've just had floods and cyclones and the rest of it, and, mm. you know, I'm not sure if New Zealand First is a great supporter of, you know, and, you know, <laughs> doing things for climate change. Oh, it's that hard thing because everyone goes, don't count out Winston Peters. Right, mate. You know, like, that's meant to be the role, but we're kind of at a point now where... You never want it. It's a hard one there. Like I feel. You mean like, you don't? You mean you don't want him to come back? I look. I. It depends on how we're talking about politics. Are we talking about it as a game or a sport, or are we talking about it in terms of moving New Zealand forward and having a better nation? Oh God. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> what are we talking about? Is because as a sport, like I also think that one of the things with Matuhuni is that he holds. He holds the group of people that are quite disgruntled with politics and holds them there in a productive way and in a way where they're not organising in all these different little groups outside Parliament and the, and the protests and all of that group and the disinformation. I think he actually channels a lot of the, you know, deserved disgruntledness with politics into a group that's quite productive and I think that that's the, the positive for New Zealand first. That's what they, they tend to do. 
I'm going to give you a little job now because I've been doing this whole show without um, someone in my ear. So when you hear that we have to wrap up, you have to tell me, okay? Okay. Yeah, oh, when hey, someone yeah, tells yeah, you yeah. in your ear, and then yeah. thank you. Cause you're I so, thought it was the races. <laughs> yeah, because you're so um, <laughs> professional at this now that you can do that job for me. So let's talk about some of the others. There's some. Uh, the Māori Party released a whole lot of names on Waitangi Day. That was quite clever. Yeah. Did you like any of them? Um, you know what, what I really loved about Waitangi this year? And unfortunately, I wasn't there, but I, I watched it on the TV. It was actually the pohiri of yes. um, oh, it was and, incredible. And how Te Pāti Māori came on. You know, real traditional, real. It blew me away, actually. And so, big ups to to Te Pāti Māori. Big ups to Rawiri and and Kitty, um, and and also Deb. You know, I I just think their time. Your, your phone's making noises. Is it? Yeah. I mean, sorry, your watch. Oh shit! Yeah, it's sorry. too. You're having a tote. Oh, yeah. That's my golf. Carry on, carry on golf. No golf, golf right now, yes. That's golf watch. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and uh, I, I think if there was a time for this new breed of Māori Party, mm. um, it's it's in a couple of months' time. Mm. It's in six or seven months' time. So Maria Meno Kappa from the Taitokiro, she, she, she's, one, she's going to be standing against Calvin Davis. Do you think she'll make an impact? Three minutes. Yeah, there's about 8,000 votes in, the, in it last time. I think that given that Labour, uh, that it's again one of those things that's hard to predict, given that Labour last time got that red wave, that mm, bump from their yep. COVID response, and we saw that happen in the, through the election study, we saw that happen in the Māori electorates too, that Māori still stayed with Labour and are grateful for Labour for that. 8,000 votes is quite a lot it's to heaps, win. It's heaps, it's heaps. It's heaps. Like I'm looking at Tamaki Makoto, Titai Hoaru, Waiariki, like they're the main contests for me. Oh, who will be the, which seats will are likely to flip. Yeah, those three. So Waiariki, I think Rawiri Waititi is likely to hold it at this stage. We could, but again, it's it's such narrow margins and yeah. it's hard to know what local issues will come to the fore. That's yeah. right. Chitai Huaru, like, we're probably, most people seem to be Hare saying... Hareti Hipango, put a name up to stand for National there. Mm. She's not going to win, man, come on. No? No. She's yeah. not going to make I mean, the, 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 the leader of the National Party says they're, they're, they're a waste of time, but we'll run them anyway. OK, because well, you've told me that we've got three minutes, so we've only got two now, so tell me your picks for Te Matatini, because uh, we've got a week of coming Seriously? Up. Yes. I'm with my kids and my, my whanau well, part of know. I thought you might be like Hati or something from up north. Yeah, well, yeah, it's like um, I'm a supporter of Liverpool and I really love Everton playing well, but Liverpool will win. It's the same here. So now to my knuckles, your pick? Oh, uh, they ha they are my pick every What's it been like at home? Because you've had a lot of them oh, around. It's uh, been, been, been Loud. a bit chaotic. You know, yeah, and the moggles running around think that they are part of the team as well. So, you know, it's cool. The dog runs around. Yeah, yep. so the Olympics of Kapahaka in the next four or five days. Uh, have you got a favourite team? What would Look, you like? I just don't. Like, at best, I can sing Te Aroha off key. So it's not really <laughs> for me to predict a winner at all. I'm more of a group thing in myself. <laughs> I'm more, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but yeah. it would be nice for, you know, one of the tight Rafati teams to come through, you know, with the oh, yeah, 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 I mean, through. But, but only if they're good enough. OK. You know, you, one minute. Thank you, Tay. One minute. Um... <laughs> Um, but what I was going to say, oh, here's a, um, a bouquet for Air New Zealand of having... Fly them all home. Oh. Yeah, oh, but, but what they're doing with the Māori language, using yeah. the Māori language, I know some people yes. will say, oh, it's just a bit of a stunt. Oh, no, I think no, some people won't know what you're talking about, but they put on a real Māori flight yeah, yeah. with all the judges. And, and was that beautiful. was cool. I mean, that's the sort of... That's the, the country that I like to belong to. Mihi ana ki a in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are we looking forward to in politics this week, just quickly? Oh, it's, I would like politics to just be a bit more steady and normal, like no disasters, no leadership changes, just like start talking about some policy issues and everything calm down. That's what I'm looking forward to, like a bit of return to politics as normal, starting to happen. Yeah. 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 It's, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, it'll build up to the election and mm. then she'll be all on for young and old. Well, we'll see you guys all at Matatini this week. Yeah, 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 yeah hell yeah. Buying a hot dog and... Yeah, I've got a car park. Got a ca car park even. <laughs> tēnā kōrua. Um, tēnā kōrua. Thank you for joining us and sharing all your bits and pieces for our first show. Yeah, cool. Ka pai. Ko matu a mata mō tēnei wā. Ka nui te mihi ki aku manu whiri. Uh, ki te minuta hoki, ki te puna whakatonga rewa me te māngai pāho hoki. Uh, we'll be back again in a fortnight. And don't forget you can watch us via RNZ's YouTube account and Facebook page or download us on Apple Podcasts. Nō hōra mai rā. That was good.
Kotereo te take.